pops up, Kim pops up. And then you're, after you're finished, you kind of think about, I wonder why I popped up there, or uh, what did that feel like? You kind of assess where you were in the scene. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, I have had, uh, I'm diagnosed with uh, multiple myeloma, and I'm doing great. Um, I know the tears make you feel like I'm not doing great, but I am doing great. <laughs> but I did have to lose a lot. I lost my um, groups that I could join. Um, I couldn't be with my family because I could get sick from the little kids. And I had to abandon all the self-care that I used to do. Um, couldn't really go to yoga anymore. Couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't um, get a massage. I think I miss that the most. Um, so my world, that was big and lively and a lot of fun, just shrunk to this little tiny little tiny sea, and it was really hard. Now, as I'm going through this, I feel this tremendous connection with God, that God is walking right, <clears throat> pardon me, right alongside, and I thought, well, that's, a, that's good. If I feel that way, then I'm going to be all right. Well, I don't know if anyone has been through the dark night of the soul, some people call it. Some people call it um, a prayer desert. Uh, there's lots of words for it. Uh, John of the Cross has talked about it and wrote about it. Come on in. And that is when your awareness of God is limited or you don't feel an awareness of God. And sometimes this can last for a couple of days, and sometimes that can last for a couple of months. Like uh, Mother Teresa's, a dark night of the soul lasts for years. So it just depends on where you end up. So I'm having this rough year. I'm feeling pretty close to God. And I feel that nudge because I've been in the dark night of the soul before, so I know kind of how it starts out. And I was like, oh, God, you can't do that to me again. Well, God had other ideas, which all turned out great. But in the process of getting there, it was, it was very difficult. So um, one day I was uh, just sitting in my prayer space, daring God to do something. And, um, you know, my prayer space is pretty simple. It's a couch, a window, a bird feeder outside, and um, books scattered around. And um, so I'm just kind of sitting on my couch thinking, oh, this is really hard. And um, without any prompting, uh, the scene in St. Mark's Gospel. Without me opening St. Mark's Gospel, just popped in my head. And in this particular scene, I mean, if you want to close your eyes, you can. I'll try to paint it as best I can. But Christ is crucified. Um, he's on the cross. His uh, mother has walked me, his loved apostles are there, and as love would have it, there was I, way back on the hill, um, Christ and uh, the thieves are on one hill, there's a slight valley, his mother standing there, <clears throat> Mary Magdalene, the beloved apostles, other people who are 
milling around. They, you know, they're coming through town. They're not really sure what horrible thing is going on, but they know this is pretty serious. And I'm standing on a hill. I just kind of watch all this going on. And I just kind of sat there on my couch. I thought, I, I don't really understand what's happening here. And um, and it gets quiet. Oh, it's kind of cloudy. It's not, it's not raining, but it's cloudy. And I don't know if you've ever been to a movie where everything fades, that there's only maybe two people in the scene that are connected, or maybe a family in the scene is connected, but everything else falls away. It's there, but it's not a focus. And so I am standing on this hill. The Christ is crucified. And Um, it is compassionate arms are, are reaching out on either side of the cross to um, embrace all of us, to embrace all of our suffering, to embrace all of our doubts, to just embrace the humanness that he had along with us. And from the cross and these beautiful arms that are opened, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I'm on this hill and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's how I feel. My God, my God, how could you abandon me in my hour? And so I'm standing there, I'm looking at the Christ. And even though we are, oh, I don't know, a half a mile distance, I can see his eyes. He can look into my eyes. And he just says, I understand. I am here. You are not alone. These arms of mine, my compassionate arms, want to embrace all of humanity and bring you peace. And in that moment, the scene disappeared and I'm sitting on my couch thinking, oh, I needed that. What a miracle. So that is um, imaginative prayer, which I hope you try. It's really not as traumatic as what I've gone through. It's really um, quite exciting. Um, and so that's my little description of imaginative prayer and the compassionate love that God has for us all. And he just wants to give us grace all the time. He just loves us so, so much. And I think that's, that's all I got.